This was the only place and the only hope for us. When you have five nations around you, well, what are you going to do? We will have to face the armies of the neighboring Arab countries. We came out of the army and we thought that would be a great thing to partake in, to get back our own land. They said, Paul, would you like to help your people? We want you to run between Cyprus and Palestine. If the British catch you, they will hang you. I said, let's go. David Ben-Gurion had contacted Sonneborn and said that we need the help of American leaders. My father had the mission of getting three boats and getting them outfitted on the Miami River. We outfitted the ship to house 1,500 people. And it was very small to be going across the ocean. The English had people trying to stop us all the way. A significant amount of TNT had been stored on a dock on the Upper West Side and it had exploded, taking out the pier. It was a lot of cloak and dagger, but it was all to do with Israel. It wasn't anything subversive that would harm the country. The mechanics would disassemble the plane and put it into the, the transport planes. And they would then be unloaded in Israel and they would be reassembled again. The guys that were in my squad, they were wonderful guys. Their spirit was such, it just moved me. We had a, quite a group of an international group of 10, 12 countries represented in the Signal Corps. Even in the worst of times, there was not even a whisper about losing. General Yosef Vidal said, we want you to build this factory for the ammunition if you were caught by the British in the creation of, of armament, you might have death penalty. We kept them one last will for ourselves because we said, they'll never take us alive. It takes cataclysm to move people where there is no choice, where your back's against the wall. You fight, all for one, or you all die together. <laughs>